Hello traders, Nick Shaheen here looking at Dash, uh, DoorDash, and uh, it had a terrible reaction to the earnings, or actually it was already falling, uh, going into the earnings, and um, reported fell, but it's muddled with the fact that Wall Street had two bad days, uh, so let me start there. Everything I say usually about any stock has to work within the whole market, right? So I will make comments as if it's trading all by itself, but remember that it will have to follow the market as well. Rarely do they just go against the market. Um, people are asking, is this the bottom? And I'm thinking, bottom of what? <laughs> We're like within 3% of the all-time high in the S&P. Bottom of what? Let's have something first before we have a bottom for it. Here you can start asking, is this the bottom? Because it's quite a bit lower than where it was, you know, 40% from the highs. So um, how can we make sense of it? First, we, we, we talk macro, the economy. We, we will talk the, the micro of the company, like what is it? Um, I can tell you it grows really fast. So <laughs> I don't need it to be a genius to look at, all right, so the revenues went for 300 million a quarter to, uh, to, to um, 900 almost 870 so a, a, a trailing 12 month of 2.2 billion that's pretty good strong top line growth so this is a growth company so and then they start talking earnings and i'll show you how people mistake things so i went to benzinga to find out um what happened in the quarter i couldn't get the number i wanted i wanted to see the price the, the, the i want to evaluate the sales portion who cares what their earnings were uh, missed expectations these people are actually morons that actually put out these expectations because if you read their ratings make no sense you know it's a hold um it's a it's a sell and they have the price target higher than the current price or it's a hold and the price target is way below current price it just doesn't make sense so just use your logic and if it's a growth company I don't talk about earnings. Um, you can't build an empire skimping. You have to overspend. And if you're growing really fast, who cares what your bottom line was? So nowhere here do they say, unless I'm missing it, um, uh, uh, the, the, the sales this quarter versus last year this quarter. And it's huge. Just We just looked at the, the trade, how it's tracking. It's tracking a lot higher. So there's no problem with the quarter. Whatever these numbers versus expectations, the absolute numbers say this, tell the story. It's growing gangbusters. So this is where I say, okay, so let's see if it's expensive from that perspective. Uh, 24 price to sales is not expensive. And I'm, well, it's high, but it's not expensive given what I'm seeing these days. It's probably cheaper than Tesla. It's definitely cheaper than all of the uh, other junk that they're chasing in the IWM. So it's high, but it's not crazy high. Um, I keep coming back to Zoom. Zoom was over 110. So this is the number of years worth of sales built into its stock price now. So now that we talked ma macro, the whole ma market, micro, this company, it's worth owning if it's falling into its quote all-time low because this is a young company. So let me see if I have lines. I do remember talking about it, so I do have lines. Okay, so this was a fail. They came back and took it out, and they went to this crazy part. Then they came back and tested it to the penny. And right where we had a doji here. So this is a daily chart. So what I would do is extend that guy right because clearly it it um, it matters. Okay, so it's going to matter when on the way up. Uh, so these are daily candles for such a young stock. It doesn't tell the whole story, but it just tells where it's at. Um, I don't look up here where that arrow was. I look what's here. What's below is support. So you can see what I can do here is put a line for these. They tried to hold, but then they fell off a cliff for some reason. I don't know what. I don't know why. I'll just say this so far looks like support so i will put that uh, support zone <clears throat> so i have support below if i'm long already especially from up there and i didn't bail on it this is not where i panic out doesn't mean it's not going lower the market could take it down lower um, but it's not a place i panic out i can also tell you that the sellers are in control don't need to tell you that it's there so that means 
usually the people don't know what to make with that statement. Pops will be sold until you stop making lower lows. So bottoming is a process. We've gotten used to these V-shaped recoveries. That's not a bottom. A bottom is a process where you stop making lower lows. First of all, they haven't done that yet. They're still making lower lows at this time frame, two hour candles. And then you start building upside momentum. It's okay to make lower highs, but if you stop making lower lows, then you establish a ledge and you start making lower highs against that ledge and it comes into a pinch and then boom, you can break out of it and snap out of it. And then you tackle the lines on the way up. This is going to be one of them. This is going to be another one. This is definitely going to be another area. This whole area, the volume profile on the left, tells us that they loved it here, so they're going to be active on the way up. So if the bulls start taking the action, so it'll be more buyers than sellers, so it'll be buy, 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 sell, buy, 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 sell, they come to a point where they both were active, very active before, then they, it, teeter, it peters, because then they'll be buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell again. So resistance on the way up. Job one, stop making lower lows. Start being constructive. So I'm going to go to an hour chart. All right, so there's no no time frame yet that the bulls are in charge. They're selling the pops. So if I were guessing right here, I'd say if I have greens from this point on, I'd book them and I'll buy it up here because that would start at this time frame to tell me the bulls are trying to make something of it. But they're still lower lows, lower highs, and they're po selling the pop. Who's they? Machines. Um, I think retail only does 18 to 20 percent of all the action, and the rest is just machines. Um, and the market structure guys, great product by the way, marketstructureedge.com, I believe. Uh, they have a sentiment tool, but the way they derive who's the price action, try to forecast it, they look at what money is in charge. And that's really important. The market structure, more so than the actual prices. So technicals are great, which is what we're doing here. But knowing how it's behaving and why is really important. So in this case, this, I would think there'd be sellers at least at the first try. So how does that work out? That doesn't mean it's doomed. They will snap out of it, but how? So let's say I'm right and they fade and then hold support and then come back. So now they have an opportunity. It's an inverse head and shoulders where the bulls can just edge a little bit and then they trigger some machines to start buying the upside potential of this guy, which will get us through this and onto the next line of problems, which would be this one. Repeat the process all the way up. The job one is stop making <laughs> lower lows. Didn't happen here. They're trying to do it here. So be agnostic. Uh, don't fall in love with the stock. I like the stock so far. I'm not long. I'm not talking my game. I would think about going long. How I go long is I sell puts or put spreads. Like yesterday, or that today, is it still, oh, it's green. So today or yesterday would have been good to sell puts when everybody's bailing on it. The puts would be whew, fat and happy because everybody's panicking. And yesterday the VIX was up 30%, so all the puts would have been fat. I bet you if somebody sold a put yesterday, they made money today even when it was down because the VIX was down. So just from the VIX, collapse, VIX collapsing, oh, in this case, also the implied volatility crush from the earnings. So, yeah, that would have been good. I missed it. But if I'm long, that's not the place to panic. I do have support, and I do have the whole market and the buy the dip folks. By the way, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, right? Last I checked, this is, this is these two days is like the biggest dip we've had in a while, so why not buy it? All right, Nick signing out. But I'm not recommending anything for anybody. I'm just commenting as to how I approach a stock. And uh, of course it's risky. It's a, it's, it's a young name. It still loses a lot of money. But I don't follow the herd. I don't listen to these idiots on Wall Street. They rig the game and they still lose. It's weird. And then they put fancy terms to it. Long gamma, short this and blah, 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 blah. I get it. I understand it. But there's no need for any of that. It, every 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 trade that happens is a contract between a buyer and a seller. It's a contest between a buyer and a seller. If you're buying a stock, you're not buying it off the shelf. If you're buying a call, you're not buying it off the shelf. There's another person on the other end that has the exact opposite opinion of you. 
So you think he's an idiot. He thinks you're an idiot. Only time will tell who's right. So it's a contract between the, the two and the contest. So just use plain, simple Main Street logic. And, and I bet you'll come out ahead and stop watching CNBC.